Hey everyone, how's it going? Ollie here from the Ergocast. I hope you've all been enjoying the summit so far. And for the next piece, I'm going to talk about Deep Ocean, which is a, uh, a collection of ideas for implementing a dark pool between blockchains. Before we actually go into Deep Ocean, it's probably a good idea just to tidy up on layer 2 implementations itself. Um, there does seem to be quite a lot of misconception of the space, probably due to lack of uh, definition. Um, you know, we, we, we see uh, we, we see the space go around in circles um, between layer 2 solutions scaling, layer 2 solutions scaling. When in reality, uh, a layer two solution is a, a lot more complex than that. So you know, <clears throat> I guess in one 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 way of defining it, a layer two solution expands a ledger's dimension. So scaling could be one aspect, but the reality of it is, it could be functionality, it could be interoperability, um, it could be in any manner as long as it's sort of an overlaying network which cooperates with the underlying protocol. In some sense this does, um, it does rule out contractual based protocols so you know uh, decentralized applications, maybe oracle pools but also in that way maybe they, um, maybe they deserve their own definition. <laughs> Um, so yeah, layer two solutions aren't just fashioned for scaling. Another aspect to think about is settlements themselves. Um, in the main way for cross-chain um, exchanges to take place is through atomic swaps. Regardless of if they're hash locked, or time locked. Uh, another sort of way of doing it is through wrapped assets. So that's where you know you have big uh, wrapped Bitcoin on say ETH, um, and you know you're you're trading trading Bitcoin for ETH. But this is sort of a backwards approach, and and it's not really it's not really authentic per se. Um, you know, it's like trading fool's gold for gold itself. It looks the same, but it isn't the real deal. So you know you can do some dirty dancing exchanging like that. <laughs> but another method is through a decentralized exchange. That one's a little bit blurred for comprehension because, of course, you can um, you know a decentralized exchange might just be for the native asset and tokens which are native to that chain. So you know you, you, you're picking grapes from the same vine. But what is Deep Ocean? Um, why could it be a, uh, a supernova for Layer 2s? Um, so, Deep Ocean itself is a way of um, achieving dark pool functionality on the blockchain. Now for most of us, that doesn't really uh, bring much to mind. But for a die-hard crypto fan, it might... Um, there might be some understanding in there. So a dark pool is an exchange in itself and it's one that allows private transfer between separate parties. In traditional finance this tends to be a home for hedge funds and large players who have a lot of equity to exchange and because of the potential for market adversaries to be to uh, become involved like we saw with um, the short squeeze on GameStop and all of that in 2020. Um, these big players sort of seek a uh, another mechanism to make an investment to protect themselves from such. So, you know, dark pools also operate on market price. There's a option to have a limit there, um, a limit there, but 
you know, generally speaking, it operates. Um, you, you you buy for what is being sold, and you sell for what is being bought. And this uh, th this wave of operation creates an environment that's very liquid and very quick. Um, so <clears throat> you can already see there's a few benefits there to be reaped. Now, because it there is a layer of privacy on top of liquidity, um, there it is impossible to inspect the liquidity itself. And this means that price discovery isn't exactly possible. Now, you know, that might be a pitfall for some people, but it is also an aspect which can protect uh, small assets from, you know, volatility or big players. So, you know, the, the, market, the removal of market transparency can mitigate large uh, market impact from big trades and deep ocean is essentially just a a protocol that enables this private transfer um, the features are secondary to this but it is the features that you know uh, make the protocol so value uh, valuable so the specifics in deep ocean now for even though um, deep ocean is a layer 2 protocol it does require an underlying settlement mechanism so it does um, it does need some functionality like atomic swaps to operate therefore the protocol needs um, it needs a companion to work with it's not something that can just operate on itself. But generally speaking, it also isn't a liquidity pool because the the idea is to simply just enable that exchange. The the ideas from this protocol are focused on transferring privately asset from one party to another. I guess in that way you consider it you can consider it as like a, a VPN tunnel to exchanging. But just as it is with atomic swaps, it is blockchain agnostic, so it can be present to uh, introduce um, interoperable functionality in a private manner. And yeah, I mean, we've already covered that it can defend market participants from adversaries, but unlike Unlike in traditional finance, there is a possibility of introducing punishments for those that um, disobey the protocol. Now that could be done in, in you know with a normal exchange, but of course when we're talking about blockchain and whatnot, everything's autonomous, so it, it can be programmed. It can be programmed, and the nice thing is, unlike in traditional finance. Deep Ocean doesn't require you to trust a third party. With the aforementioned, you do need to have some faith in the operator of the exchange. You know that they don't leak information. Um, they don't play on the other side of the order books. Whereas here, everything is private. There's no need to. Um, there's no need to reveal order size. Of course you need to submit your orders, otherwise the exchange can't take place. But other than that, the protocol makes use of um, zero-knowledge proofs, which we'll get to in a moment. A downside to it is that users do need to be present throughout the trade, as is the case with atomic swaps. So, you know, if the PC, if, you, if your system powers down um, in the background without you knowing, you could be... Um, you could meet the conditions for punishment, which we will um, get to. So you know, it's not exactly a Blade Runner, um, but it does open some avenues. It does open some avenues. Now, how does it actually work? 
I guess there is some uh, possibility to introduce game theory, <laughs> um, but the actual protocol itself is pretty simple. It could be a little bit more complex when we're talking about the cryptographic side of things. But it starts off with um, Alice and Bob registering with Eve, where Eve is our third party. This could be something simple, like you know, uh, submitting your address. But if you're a, a regulated exchange, you can. It, this could also include submitting KYC details or maybe even an email address. So, following on from the registration, both parties submit their orders to Eve. Now, Alice and Bob, they're of course looking to engage with an exchange and therefore they need to state what asset they want to buy and what asset they need to sell. And potentially even a limit price if the market price doesn't meet their uh, taste. Once that's been done, uh, Eve then looks through her registrar of um, of orders and looks to match Alice and Bob. Once that match has been found, Eve simply informs them um, that there is a potential trade aligned for them and uh, seeks for confirmation. Now this po point is um, this part is pretty important because once they confirm that they're interested within the trade, they are then subject to the repercussions of um, of backing out. So you know this is the part where the goonies are sort of stripped away. Following on from the matching and confirmation, Alice and Bob then compare their orders. Now the idea here is to find out who has the smaller order size. And the this is all done without actually disclosing um, the order size themselves through uh, the zero knowledge proofs. Then following on from the comparison, Eve um, becomes aware of who has a smaller order size, which will be the one that uh, becomes fulfilled, of course. And that order itself um, is then deleted from her database, wherever that's stored. Whereas Alice's remaining order size is calculated on her end, and Eve instructs Alice to continue with the trade. Now for Bob, as his order has been um, fulfilled, he can now reveal his hand since the price and relevant order size is known, um, you know, it, it could be calculated. But only the, um, the only necessity here is the exchanging of addresses and the collection of fees from Eve. Settlement of, order, settlement of both orders can begin following that um, since the price and relevant order size is known. <clears throat> so the primitives, the ideas behind this, this is where the jungle cryptography comes into play um, and as we all know it becomes a little bit complex. <laughs> so whether you're a black beetle in the space or not, these are generally the ideas which the protocol draws on. It makes use of elliptic curve cryptography for communicating and committing to the order sizes and it uses zero knowledge proofs as well. Now, specifically it uses Pedersen commitments and without going too deep into this, um, a secret is shared between two parties, Alice and Bob, and then a commitment is sent, which is to be confirmed later on. The participant order sizes are encrypted via El Gamal. Um, and this is important because all communication will go through Eve um, for both parties. 
On the aspect of zero knowledge proofs, these four are used throughout the protocol just to provide assurance that the other party parties' calculations and encryption uh, encryption techniques have taken place, while also um, abstaining from revealing any information itself. So that's generally the overview of the protocol. You can go on Cornell University's archive um, and you'll find the paper there for yourself if you wish to go any further. Um, and if you're also interested in the dynamics of the uh, of how dark balls operate, I would recommend checking out Marketplace APM on YouTube, who goes uh, who gives tutorials on such ideas. Other than that, I hope this has been uh, fruitful for you, and that you guys enjoy the rest of the summit. Take care.